It's actually, it's peer pressure mostly. You know, goading, peer pressure. Um, also, I think, I think there was more, was there more fear in the beginning or is it all fear all the time? See, but fear makes also better video. <laughs> so I think there's also, we're always thinking about the fact that we're also trying to make a film. And so, I don't know, me personally, I, I often play the role sort of producing and goading him on and saying, oh, it'll be okay, go ahead, do it. You know, go ahead, put on the wig. Um, actually, that's one example where I, I wouldn't have said put on the wig. If I had seen the fucking wig, I would have said, do not put on the wig. I, mean, I didn't see the wig. The wig either. was insane, right? I mean, it's a crazy wig. It's, I mean, the, guy, the guy's hair is crazy, the original guy. I mean, you saw a picture of him uh, upon whom the hair is modeled, but... Um, it was actually um, RuPaul's wig maker that made that hair. Of course. There, that, but it was like it, it delivered at 7 in the morning after a uh, night of... Whatever. This is what happens when you have like friends in high and low places. You know, somebody says, oh, I know the perfect person to make this wig. RuPaul's wig maker, but he's only available between 4 and 7 a.m. after he finishes the drag show. And so we get this wig, like hot off the wig maker's wig stand at 7 a.m. that he's made between the hours of 4 and 7 a.m. And so nobody's seen it. It's in a closed box. That's how that happened. But the fear thing, it, it's like, you know, for us in, in our world, this world, uh, which is the same as our world, kind of, or the European world or whatever, there, it's like fear is just one little element of the equation, and it's kind of fun. You know, you know nothing really bad is going to happen to you. It's like, even if you go out and lock down, you're just going to get arrested. It's like, and then you're going to spend the night in jail or something. We were just in Turkey where people are doing things at the real, at real risks to their lives, you know, and they have to deal with that. It's like, we don't, there's no reason to actually fear anything um, in this context, especially in the kind of stuff that we do. I mean, that's not locking ourselves down either. Um, they're, they're, the worst that can happen to us there is somebody's gonna be insulted, usher us off the stage, yell at us, something like that. It's, it's just, you know, that, that just becomes, I mean, it doesn't diminish the fear. The fear is still there. You're still totally afraid. But it just becomes another part of the, you know, what, what spurs you on. It's like adrenaline. So, yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of people who do things that are frightening for fun, too. So, I mean, there's, I mean, in a minor kind of way, I know people do things like skiing here. Or, <laughs> or riding, riding bikes in traffic. And, I mean, there is this whole like getting to some place that's important there too. But um, yeah, it, it's eco tourism or I don't know, adventure. What do you call it? Uh, extreme sports. This is a lot less dangerous, but you get some of the adrenaline. Yeah, that, that very much depends on the project. Um, I mean, there's some groups that we've kept in contact with for years, like um, the Bhopal survivors from the last film, who we continue to work with, um, you know, and you continue to agitate, even now, it's where we've passed the 30th anniversary of the Bhopal catastrophe, and they're still very active and very engaged, but, but facing increasingly difficult times of getting people out, for example, to the AGM, uh, the, the annual general meeting of Dow, which is happening in about one month, uh, in, um, in Midland, Michigan, and so if you happen to know people in Midland, they, they definitely are looking for people who will still be able to go out and continue that struggle. Um, so we do, we maintain relationships as, as much as we, we can, but in a lot of ways, the reason why we tried to, this new thing, this action switchboard, is because the relationships became kind of impossible to maintain. And, and in fact, you see it, kind of, you see it in the movie, we have all these other personal relationships which we've neglected, which we're trying to maintain as well. And you know, there's friends here tonight who I haven't talked to in four or five years, and I'm looking forward to saying hello afterward, but it's that how you keep doing that over time with all these different groups is really difficult. And you know, being activists who work on kind of this um, broad 
issues at an international, you know, in the international arena instead of locally and intensively has its drawbacks and also has its flaws. So, I mean, it's something that we keep trying to deal with. <laughs> in the uh, project placement, yeah, we, we tried to like tell, I think it was Carlsberg Beer that we would take them out of the film if they paid us some money. <laughs> <laughs> they told us they would sue us if we kept their logo in. That was the response. Yeah, yeah, but they did. But you can see it's still in there, so. Yeah, we're looking forward to being elderly because <laughs> police are less likely to beat you up, even though that's never happened to us. No, you know, there's a certain authority that comes with age to a, to a degree. I mean, you can cross that threshold as well. Um, and then people don't trust you at all. But, um, but, you know, there is a way in which we're gaining a little bit more, but it's harder for us to become, you know, black or, you know. So, uh, no, but, no, but seriously, it's really interesting. Like, everybody, we learn a lot working from, with Kadili here, who is a black woman, working, an African woman, working with uh, Gitz and Tito, who use, you know, race and cultural assumptions in a different way. They have a different way of uh, applying leverage with that tool, right? It's Gitz who says to us, I can get the audience to do anything, you know? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? He says, oh, if they think that this is like a ritual and they're going to engage with me, they're going to respect, you know, I don't care. This is the most racist city in the world, Washington, D.C., and I think that they're still going to get up and dance. And we're like, no way. He says, sure they will. Watch. And they did. And they did. So it's not, you know, it's not as, like, I guess everybody has tools. And sometimes the prejudices that would be used against you to exclude you from that situation would also be kind of weapons that could be turned into something funny. Um, because people would be so... Uh, nervous about offending, you know, so nervous about transgressing. And, and once you're up there, you know, on the stage and people expect you that, that you're, you know, it's like you are that person, they respect you no matter what. I mean, maybe a white guy, but I'm wearing the most stupid, <laughs> insane way in the world, you know, and they let me up there and they applaud and they listen and they shake my hand. I mean, it really, I, this guy, um, one of the founders of Okpor, the, the movement that overthrew Milosevic in 2000, uh, founded a kind of revolutionary consultancy afterwards where they went around to different countries that were in the middle of a struggle and helped them with whatever they had you know, learned. They, they taught them their techniques. They actually ended up counseling the Egyptian revolutionaries um, at one point, but there's a chapter in the book that's uh, called it, it Can Never Happen Here. It's like people always think that, no, well, they can do it, but we can't. You know, there's a reason we can't do it. It's always, like, there's always some reason. And I think that applies pretty universally. We always think, you know, there's some reason that those people over there can do it and we can't. Um, I don't know what it's about, but I don't think there is any reason. Um, I, I, to be honest, um, it's not actually that easy. I mean, you would think that we're wildly successful because we've made movies, but actually the movies cost a lot of money, so I'm actually three months behind on my rent in New York, but my landlord is an old, like, commie, and she's been very forgiving. She, like, came to the screening and of our movie in New York, and, you know, it's like, she knows the kids and stuff, so. Uh, <laughs> But um, but also, uh, but also, but also, we, we do get money from foundations. We get money from uh, we apply for grants. We formed a nonprofit organization, which has been a lot of work because we're also employing people now, like a couple of part-time staff. It means once you're paying somebody, then you really got to raise money. Um, for the movies, it's a whole separate thing. We get money from broadcasters, television interests, things like that. Um, and then uh, on top of it all, we go around and we use speaking things. And that's why I, I hope very much that you will, if you haven't, 
donate to support Cinema Politica because they're helping us, you know, a little bit of money that helps, you know, us ape continue this type of thing that we do. And they actually play an insanely important role in the lives of a lot of filmmakers. There's very few places in the world where we could come and have an entire full audience in a city this size. And that's because of the work, I mean, seriously, it's like the work they've done over, you know, more than a decade of making this thing happen and building the audience and, you know, creating this. So, um, so anyway, we feel a huge debt to them. And so, um, but they're also supporting us. And yeah, that's how we do it. And we have day People jobs. Like, yeah, and we have day jobs. Oh, I forgot about that, yeah. We work. <laughs>
But, but everything was changing. In that time, in the 24 hours immediately before the event, everything was changing constantly because we thought, okay, it's off, we're coming up with plan B, and finally we said, okay, we're going with plan A again, but plan A is slightly different because, you know, by then we'd been through this sort of harrowing, weird experience where we thought that it was over. 